My name is William Justice. Today we're going to be creating this 2020 New Year's countdown using DaVinci Resolve and Fusion. This is my last video for the year. So looking forward to next year, I plan to do a lot more with DaVinci Resolve and Fusion, and I'm also going to try to get out more, do some filming, and create some new things. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'm currently optimizing my process and trying to set up my workflow to be much more efficient. So I'm going to kind of try to, try to document what I'm doing to do things better and smarter, and I'll let you know how it goes. Okay, I know I've been teasing the green screen video for a while. It, it is coming, trust me, um, just a matter of getting it finished. I really plan on getting out and shooting a lot more and creating more of these, these type videos. Subscribe and comment below to follow my progress. If you like my videos, let me know. Um, I really appreciate your support. So today I wanted to try setting up a New Year's 2020 countdown. Um, so let's get started and see how it works. Okay, so to get started, we need a couple of things. We're gonna use a fusion animation, and then I created this um, background clip with some uh, some dots. I, you, you actually did this in fusion. Um, it turned out to be a lot harder than I wanted. Um, I was trying to start at using some uh, like a duplicate duplicate node, and you know some transitions and some all kinds of stuff, and it just blew up the computer. So I ended up having to make it in small little pieces and then piece it back together to create a little bigger chunk. And we're going to use this the, as the background of our text. Um, it should have been way easier. I think it was just overloading my computer or something. So um, i would really never had any problems with Resolve like that, but it crashed a lot trying to just put something simple like this together. So anyway, to get started, we're going to right click in the media pool area and say new fusion, new fusion composition. And let's make this one um, 75 seconds long because we have to have plenty of time for the countdown. And we're at 24 frames a second. We'll hit create. And we'll drag that into the timeline and get into Fusion by clicking Fusion. All right. So the first thing we want to the first thing we want to do is set up our countdown text. So we're going to take a text node and drag that in, and we'll just slide that over to the media out for now. So to get the text to work, we're going to let's open up the inspector here. We're going to right click on where it says Style Text, and we're going to use an expression. And I'll show you how this works. So we're going to start out with just time as our, let's say time is our expression. And what that's going to put in there is that's going to put in the frame number. So you can see the frame number goes up as I move it along. We'll go ahead and uh, you know size the text up, make it a little bit bigger. Let's say we'll do uh, 0.4. That'll work pretty good. So we, and when we play it, you see the frames go up. So the first thing we want to do is we're going to take the time over here on the, the right and we're going to divide it by 24. Because we have 24 frames per second, that means every 24 frames is going to be one second. So you see it comes out and we got this one's like 0.54. So because we have this decimal point, we're going to need to use a math operation. We'll do um, math.floor. And what that does is it basically rounds down to the nearest whole number. So when we do that, we, we have zero. And we're going to play it. We've got one, two, three. So it's going to go along that. So we actually have a number counting out kind of counting up. To do the countdown, we're going to come back over to our expression, type in 60 and minus. So that's going to be the number 60 minus the time that we're computing. And you can see that we already have our countdown started. So let's start applying some effects. First thing we, we want to do is bring in this, this background. This is going to put the, uh, the dot background behind it. We're not going to need the media pool, so we'll get rid of that. And we're going to take the output of the dot background and put it into the text. So to get the dot background to show through the text, we're going to go to the merge node. And for the operator, we're going to select in. And you can see that we, we have the dots inside of there. Now we're going to use a, um, I'm going to want the dots to be a little bit smaller. So with the media in selected, we're going to click the transform node. And the size of the transform, we're just going to bring it down a little bit. And we'll go ahead and slide it over so that it fits right in there. And we'll bring it down just a touch. OK, that looks pretty good. So we want to put an outline around the text so that you can see it better. So we have the text here. I'm going to take that text node and and hit Control C and copy it, and Control V to paste it. And we're going to take the output of the text and put it into the merge, and that's going to create a new merge node for us with the text 
on top of the other one. Then for the second text with that selected, and you see this one carried over with the same expression, we're going to hit the, uh, the shading icon. And for the appearance, we're going to choose outline. That's the outline one. And the, then we say outside only. So that's going to put the outline on the outside and we'll thicken it up a bit. Just like that. And we already got, uh, got our countdown started. We're going to animate. Once we get all the, uh, everything set up, we're going to animate it. So the next thing we want to put in here is we want to take these guys and move them over a little bit. And in this first merge, we're going to add some light rays. So we hit control space and start typing in ray and choose light rays. Now we're going to take the, uh, the center point for the light rays is this little um, element up here. We're going to drag it right kind of down into the middle. And we're going to be able to adjust the, uh, the brightness of the rays um, and the length like that. So we'll get back to this in just a second. I'm going to go ahead and like make them like a, like a blue color. And we want to add a few more things to this text. We're going to put the text up here. And I'm going to start by adding a, um, a blur and a glow. So we clicked the blur. Now I'm going to, with a text selector, we're going to hit Alt Space and type in glow and choose that. And we're just going to bring the glow size up a bit. It's going to make just make it a little bit softer. And we'll take the blur and blur it. And what this is doing is it's kind of blurring the this text node here, which is the outline. So we take that off. So it's just around that outline, kind of gives it a little softness. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to work on changing the color of the lights or the dots that are inside of there. So with the transform selected, we're going to hit Merge. And we're going to get a merge node in here. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a background on top of this and then blend it in so we get to colorize it. Okay, we're going to drag in a background and connect that up with the merge. And we'll just go ahead and let's set our background color to like a, a yellow or something like that for now. And on the merge, go to apply mode and we're going to set the apply mode to overlay. And you can see that to colorized the lights to a yellow. So to get the rotating color um, with the background selected, hit the, go ahead and click the color corrector and that's going to add a color corrector in the middle of here. And then all we need to do is go to the first frame and right where it says hue, we'll just drag that all the way over this way um, and hit the keyframe. And we'll go about, uh, let's say 50 frames and we'll take the hue all the way to the other side. So that means in that 50 frame period, the hue of the light is going to change. Actually, let's let's drag that over a little bit more. Actually, we'll do that. We'll get to the, go to the spline editor. This is how we're going to get it to repeat. Um, so we clicked on spline. Let's make that a little bit bigger. We'll select hue for the one that we want to see and get that. So this is the going from negative one to one on the hue. Um, I think I'm going to make that a little bit longer, so I'm going to select both of these points and hit the the time stretch, and we're just going to drag it out. There. Now, the next thing we want to do is to get it to repeat. We're going to select both of these points here and hit the set ping pong option, and now you'll notice that. It's just going to, for the whole length of the, uh, the animation, it's going to just cycle between those two values. Okay, so we got some changing colors. Now the next step is to do a little bit of animation. Get rid of the spline editor. So we're going to want to animate it right after this merge. So this merge is what we have. So we're going to use a transform node. Click transform. So each second we're going to want this thing to bounce. So for the very first frame, go to the transform, and we're going to keyframe the first frame. We're going to take the size down to, let's say, like, a, you know, like 0.7. And we'll hit uh, transform and hit 2 so we can see it. Then we're going to go over, uh, like, say, four frames. Uh, we'll do five. And we're going to bounce it up to, say, 1.1 1 1 .1 in there, 1.13, we'll do 1.1. And we'll go over two more frames and put it at one. So it's going to bounce in like that. 
So we want it to bounce out right when it's about to change the time. So we'll go to the 24th frame and back up a couple of frames. Let's see, back up three frames. We'll keyframe it at one and then we'll go to the 24th frame and we'll drop it back down to 0.7. So this is kind of what the animation looks like. It's going to pop in, it's going to pop in, wait for a second, and then drop back down. Now you notice it didn't come back up, so we need to set the, the keyframing to repeat. We can do that with the spline editor. Let's uncheck the hue. So zoom in just a little bit here. Hit this button to get it to center. So this is our animation. Um, I think I wanted to come in a little bit sooner, so I'm going to slide this over and slide this point over just a touch. Now, to get this to repeat, we highlight all the points, and just like we did before, we set the ping pong option. And you can see that this animation is just going to keep repeating. So it's gonna come in and bounce away. All right, the last thing I did is I animated the um, the rays, because I thought it looked good when the, the rays contracted and popped out at the same time. So let's do the same thing with the rays. We're going to select the rays, go to the first frame, and we're going to keyframe the the length. And we're going to let's bring the length down pretty small. And then we're going to go over a few frames to where it gets bigger. And we're going to pop those rays up pretty big. Let's uh, make this a little bit so we can see things. Pop the rays up pretty big, make them a little bit brighter. That looks good. And we're going to go down to about the right when it starts to contract, like the 21st frame, it starts going in. We're going to keyframe the, get a keyframe by the length, and go down to the 24th frame and shrink them down. And it's, you're probably going to want that to match what's on the first frame. So if we go to the first frame, we have uh, 0.118. So we'll go to the 24th frame and we'll put it back at 0.18 so it's going to match up. And there's our animation. Okay, so we want the rays to repeat as well. So we're going to get to the spline editor. We have the light rays selected. So I do that size. So these are the light rays. I'm going to highlight all of these and set the ping pong. And now we have some repeating rays. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope the countdown works. Maybe you can use it for something. If you have any questions, ideas, or anything, please let me know. I would love to hear from you. Um, hit the subscribe button to follow my progress and see what all great stuff I have coming. Thanks.